Good morning children. Hope all of you are fine. Today we will discuss about the powers of the Prime Minister, President and the Judiciary. As you know, Prime Minister is the most important political institution in the country. There is no direct election to the post Prime Minister. The President appoints the leader of the majority party or the coalition of parties that commands a majority in the Lok Sabha as Prime Minister. After the appointment of the Prime Minister, the President appoints the other ministers on the advice of the Prime Minister. Then, what is Council of Ministers? It is the official name for the body that include all the ministers. It usually has 60 to 80 ministers of different ranks. Among them, first category is cabinet ministers. They are top level leaders who are in charge of the major ministries. Cabinet is thus the inner ring of the Council of Ministers. It comprises about 25 ministers. Next category is Ministers of State with independent charges. They are usually in charge of smaller ministries. They participate in the cabinet meetings only when specially invited. And the third one is Ministers of State. They are attached to and required to assist cabinet ministers. Now, we will discuss about the powers of the Prime Minister. Prime Minister is the head of the government. He chairs cabinet meetings. He coordinates the work of different departments. His decisions are final in case disagreements arise between departments. He exercises general supervision of different ministries. All ministers must work under his leadership. The Prime Minister distributes and redistributes work to the ministers. He also has the power to dismiss ministers. When the Prime Minister quits, the entire ministry quits. Next, we will discuss about the appointment and the powers of the President of India. The President is the head of the state. He exercises only nominal powers. President is not elected directly by the people. The elected members of parliament and the elected members of the legislative assembly elect the President. Then, all governmental activities take place in the name of the President. All laws and major policy decisions of the government are issued in the name of the President. All major appointments are made in the name of the President. This include the Chief Justice of India, Judges of the Supreme Court and High Courts, the governors of states, the election commissioners, ambassadors to other countries, etc. All international treaties and agreements are made in the name of the president. The president is the supreme commander of the defense force of India. President also enjoys discretionary powers. When no party or coalition get a majority in the Lok Sabha, the President exercises her discretion. The President appoints a leader who in her opinion can muster majority support in the Lok Sabha. In such a case, the President can ask the newly appointed Prime Minister to prove majority support in the Lok Sabha within a specified time. Next, we will discuss about the Indian judicial system. What is judiciary? All the courts at different levels in a country put together are called the judiciary. 
the indian judiciary consists of a supreme court for the entire nation high courts in the states district courts and courts at local level india has an integrated judiciary what is integrated judiciary it means that the supreme court controls the judicial administration in the country its decisions are binding on all other courts of the country it can take up any dispute between citizens of the country between citizens and government between two or more state governments and between governments at the union and state level it is the highest court of appeal on civil and criminal cases it can hear appeals against the decisions of the high courts independent judiciary is another important factor it means that judiciary is not under the control of the legislature or the executive the judges do not act on the direction of the government or according to the wishes of the party in power then how are the judges of the supreme courts and high courts are appointed the judges of the supreme court and the high courts are appointed by the president on the advice of the prime minister and in consultation with the chief justice of the supreme court then how can a judge be removed a judge can be removed only an impeachment motion passed separately by two thirds members of the two houses of the parliament it has never happened in the history of indian democracy the judiciary in india is also one of the most powerful in the world how let's discuss the supreme court and the high courts have the power to interpret the constitution of the country they can declare invalid any law of the legislature or the actions of the executive whether at the union level or state level if they find such a law or action is against the constitution thus they can determine the constitutional validity of any legislation or actions of the executive in the country this is known as judicial review the supreme court has also ruled that the core or basic principles of the constitution cannot be changed by the parliament so the powers and the independence of the judiciary allow it to act as the guardian of the fundamental rights in recent years the courts have given several judgments and directives to protect public interest and human rights anyone can approach the courts if public interest is hurt by the actions of the government this is called public interest litigation children we have completed this chapter in this lesson we have studied about the functions and powers of the legislature means parliament executive and the judiciary let me conclude today's session for your reference i have uploaded the url go through it notes are also attached along with this take it down a test question paper is also there try it yourself thank you